This is my fifth video lesson for the ionic bond unit. In this lesson, we'll be learning how to write chemical formulas for ionic compounds. So let's go to page 15 in the class packet. Motivation. Write the chemical formula for ionic compound with elements magnesium and phosphorus. So first, go to your periodic table and look up the electron configuration of each of these elements. Magnesium is 2, A, 2. Phosphorus is 2, A, 5. Since magnesium is a metal, it is going to lose electrons. Following the octet rule, it's going to lose two electrons from magnesium to achieve the noble gas configuration. Since phosphorus is a non-metal, it's going to gain electrons. Following the octet rule, it's going to gain three electrons for phosphorus to achieve the noble gas configuration. So based off of this, each magnesium will be a positive two charge and each phosphorus will be a minus three charge. Just from looking at the charges, you can tell that magnesium phosphorus is not going to be in a one-to-one -one ratio when they form the ionic compound. If you're good with working backwards with ratios, it is called a crisscross method and I'll show you in this lesson. Learning target. At the end of the lesson, I'll be able to use the crisscross method to determine ionic compounds chemical formula, both binary and with polyatomic ions. So for homework, it'll be number five, and it'll be a junipod based off this lesson. The crisscross method is a quick and simple, easy way to get the chemical formula for ionic compounds. I'll go over the procedure and show you a few examples. Step one, look up the charge of each element. It is the top number of each box in the periodic table. So phosphorus is minus three, magnesium is positive two. Cross over the charges without the sign to find the subscripts. So this is the format. You write them close to each other. Then you write another one on the bottom. Then you crisscross the charges. So notice that the charge of magnesium becomes the phosphorus subscript. The charge of phosphorus becomes the subscript for magnesium. Reduce the subscript to the lowest terms. So three and two is really the lowest term. You cannot reduce it anymore. Always write the positive ion first, which is the metal. Magnesium is the metal, so we write that first. So our chemical formula is Mg3 phosphorus 2. So the overall charge of this compound is zero. We can check that. So since magnesium is a positive two, we have three of them, so two times three is six. Each phosphorus has a minus three charge. Minus three times two is minus six. Six plus minus six gives us zero. Let's do another example. Here we have phosphorus and lanthanum. Step one, look up the charge of each element. P is minus three, La is positive three. Step two, cross over the charges without the sign to find the subscripts. So let's do that. Reduce the subscript to the lowest terms. So the greatest common factor here is three. So we divide all the subscripts by three. If we do that, we get one for each. Step four, always write the positive ion, which is the metal first. So La is the metal, so we write that first. Subscript one is invisible, so we leave out the one because it's not needed. So this is our final answer. This is our chemical formula, LAP. So now we double check our work by double checking the charges. So La has a charge of positive three, while P has a charge of minus three. We have one each, so positive three plus negative three gives us zero. So this is a neutral ionic compound. So let's do a learning check. Element X is in group two. Element Y is in group 17. A compound formed between these two elements is most likely to have the formula. So I'll pause this video and resume once you have the answer. So first we gotta look at group two. If we look at group two, all the charges on group two is positive for each element. For group 17, the charge will be minus one. That's the top number of each element on group 17. So when you crisscross the charges, you should get choice two. What is the charge of X in MgX2? X is an unknown element and MgX2 is a neutral ionic compound. So we want to figure out what's the charge of X in this compound. So step one, we work backwards by crisscrossing backwards. 
If we do that, we get charges, but notice we don't know which one's positive, which one's negative. In an ionic compound, one ion must be positive and the other has to be negative. So step two, you figure out the charge by identifying the metal or nonmetal. The metal will be a positive ion and the nonmetal will be a negative ion. Since magnesium is a metal, magnesium will have a positive two charge and X will have a minus one charge. Let's check our work, see if it works out. So magnesium, we have one of them, two times one is two, and X, we have two of them. If X is minus one, then minus one times two will be minus two, plus two will be zero. So this works out. So X is minus one. Learning trick number two. Element X reacts with chlorine to form an ionic compound that has a formula XCl2. To which group on the periodic table could element X belong? Pause this video and resume once you have the answers. Okay, so we have the crisscross backwards. So we do that. X will have a charge of 2 and Cl will be 1. So if we look at the charge of Cl on the reference table, it is minus 1 because Cl is a non-metal. So X must be a positive 2. So if we look at the groups on the periodic table, group 2, all the elements have positive 2 charge. So the best answer is choice 2. Learning check number 3. An atom represents by X forms a compound with the formula X3N2. The atom could be what? Pause this video and resume once you have the answer. Okay, so let's crisscross backwards. So 3 will be the charge of nitrogen and 2 will be the charge of X. If you look at the periodic table, N is a non-metal. Therefore, it will be a negative 3 if you look at the top charge. So X is a positive 2. So which of these elements have a positive 2 charge? So if you look at group 2, it is magnesium. So choice 3. Now I want you to do some practice on page 16. In each question, you're given two elements, one metal and one non-metal. I want you to figure out the chemical formulas of these ionic compounds using the crisscross method. Pause the video and resume once you completed page 16. So here are the answers to page 16. Now we are going to talk about polyatomic ion. Poly means many, atomic means atom. So this basically means molecule. So polyatomic ion is a charged molecule. Polyatomic ions are found on table E on your reference table, so you don't have to memorize it. Since these are ions, they can form ionic bonds. But the polyatomic ion itself is covalently bonded. For example, here is hydroxide, OH. So typically on the regions, non-binary compounds have polyatomic ions. So non-binary basically compounds with three or more different elements. So if you see a compound with three or more different elements, there's a high chance there's a polyatomic ion in that chemical formula. If you plan to take the SD2 and AP, you have to memorize table E. Since polyatomic ions can ionic bond with other ions, I'm going to show you how to crisscross with it. So you want to treat the polyatomic ion as a single unit. And only use parentheses if the subscript is greater than 1. So I'm going to show you some examples. So here we have calcium, and this is the nitrate ion. So this is on table E. So we know calcium has a charge of positive 2, and nitrate has a charge of minus 1. So if we crisscross the charges, we have to put a parenthesis for nitrate because the subscript is greater than 1. So this will be the chemical formula of calcium nitrate. So there's an ionic bond between the calcium ion and the nitrate ion. So let me do another example between sodium and hydroxide. So the charge of sodium is positive 1. The charge of hydroxide is negative 1. So we're going to crisscross the charges. So notice that our subscript is 1. Then we do not need the parentheses. We can just leave it out. And since 1 is invisible, we can just write NaOH. This is sodium hydroxide. There's an ionic bond between the sodium ion and the hydroxide ion. Learning check number four. What is the name of the polyatomic ion in the compound Na2O2? 
pause the video and resume once you complete this. So you have to look at table E, right? Don't guess. So the answer is four peroxide. So peroxide is O2. So this is the peroxide ion. Learning trick number five. Which formula represents an ionic compound? Pause the video and resume once you have the answer. Okay, so we know ionic compounds are between metals and nonmetals or with a polyatomic ion. So looking at this, choice one has a metal with a nonmetal, so KCl. Learning trick number six. Which compound contains ionic bonds? Pause the video and resume once you have the answer. So by looking at all these choices, these are all nonmetals. There's no metals present. So there must be a polyatomic ion in the chemical formula. On the regions, when you see a compound with three or more different elements, that should automatically tell you there might be a polyatomic ion. So if you look at choice three, it has three different elements, nitrogen, hydrogen, and bromine. So there must be a polyatomic ion here. So go to table E and see if you can find it. You should have figured out that NH4 is a polyatomic ion ammonia. And ammonium has a charge of positive one. Bromine has a charge of negative one. So this is an ionic compound. So the answer is choice three. Learning trick number seven. In the sample of the solid BaNaO3 2, the ratio of barium ions to nitrate ions is what? Pause the video and resume once you have the answer. So nitrate is NO3. We have two of them, right, because they're in the parentheses. We only have one barium. So the ratio is between one to two, so choice two. In this practice, I want you to use the crisscross method to determine the formula for the ionic compounds formed from the element and polyatomic ion below. Pause the video and resume once you complete it. Okay, so here's the answers. For number 11, one common mistake that people make is that they reduce the subscripts. You cannot do that because this 2 is part of the peroxide ion. Peroxide is O2, so we have to treat the polyatomic ion as a single unit. You cannot change the subscripts within the polyatomic ion. Because if you do that, it's no longer a polyatomic ion. It'll be a different substance. So this compound, NaO, does not exist. So be careful whenever you see a peroxide ion. So here are the answers for the rest of them. So this concludes the video lesson for today. Remember to do the Junipod homework.